everyone, welcome to a brand new episode of The Woolly Thistle. I believe this is episode 170. Yep. So we're moving right along here. I'm here with my co-host Maggie. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and uh, I'm Corinne. I own and operate The Woolly Thistle with the help of Maggie and Joshua and a team of extraordinary packers and talented people. So we are here for another episode and we've got so much to share with you. Uh, we feel... Like we just got to get it all in. So, um, yes, let's uh, announce a winner. I think, Maggie, do you want to announce the first winner? We'll sure. have two. Um, our first winner is Abby Finer. Um, she says, all the podcast episodes are so well-crafted and inspiring. I always look forward to seeing new yarns, knitted projects, and I really appreciate the pattern suggestions, too. The Christmas box was incredible, and I imagine the rest of the current box will be fantastic as well. It's coming. <laughs> My guess is the mallard color might be missing from the Marie Wallen yarn collection. No. That is not We will it. We will announce which yeah. color was missing. Eagle Eyes probably will notice uh, which one it was. Uh, and we'll announce. We have a the winner for that. The next winner, yeah, yes. reveals the color. So but. stay tuned so that, to find out. Um, but yeah, mallard is, is it this one? I think that's Wode. I think this I think is mallard. It's mallard. Mallard. Yeah. Blue. Not that one, it's here. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, so in this show, we've got uh, videos with Rachel. She's in Lambing. We have a video in from Kelsey, who is going to talk about very special wool that is brand new to the Woolly Thistle. We're excited. It, yeah, in addition to some of her knitting. So Yes. Yeah. And we'll also have Emma from Tiny Desk Knits. And Emma, what's she talking about today? She's talking about summer knitting and sweater fit. Oh, fabulous. I always enjoy all of our segments. They're yeah. so good. And we know that you're enjoying them too. So we've got a very full episode for you today. Um, I'm wearing not wool today. Are you wearing any wool? I'm not wearing any wool. I am wearing some handmade, but oh. I'm not wearing wool. This is very nice. <laughs> I love this up here too. Yeah, so it's, um, it's bead crochet. Crochet? It's crochet, yeah. So I've never heard of such a thing. Um yeah, so you hair stuck in there. Um how do you crochet the beads? <laughs> so you, you have to you string all the beads onto the, the right cord. Oh, and then you and then you crochet with them and um, I used different beads and then these were just strung on. I love it. Um, yeah, so that's I mean, amazing. And it, it twists around, show it, it nice. Does, and... It's like becomes almost like a, a rope, but is it hard to do? Um, no, it's a little fiddly, but once you get going, like the beads were big, like yeah. smaller beads. I did one with slightly smaller beads and it, it was a bit of a pain, but. You are a ever. fountain of surprises. I, I haven't done any bead crochet in a while, but I love this necklace that feels very summery to me. It's very summery and so, happy. Yes. Yeah, so oh, I love you. it. I love it. I have nothing. <laughs> I have nothing to share. I figured this way I had something to share. Yes. So, yeah. yeah good for crochet. you. Good for you. And we were at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool this mm -hmm. weekend. Yeah. It was so hot. It was really hot. It was, it, it was way over 90 it, degrees. Yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. And there was no clouds. And it, it was just scorching. Yeah. Those poor vendors, they were working really, really hard. They were. Yeah. It's not usually, like, we're in New Hampshire. It is not usually 87 in May. No, but it felt so much hotter than 87 if it was. It was there was no shade. None. We did find the shady spot, though, and we did get to meet some lovely yes, viewers true. and customers. So thank you for showing up and uh, bearing with the, the horrible weather. <laughs> Yeah, it was so great to meet people. They it really were so was. friendly and warm. And, yes. And it's um, so funny because some, some of you, I felt like we already had met and apparently yeah. we had not. Like, Jolala, hi, Jolala. Um, I, I didn't realize we hadn't actually met. <laughs> I know. I, I think because I've been following her, I think for so long yeah, you're on just, Instagram you're, that I just... Exactly, I exactly. And uh, Karen, she was wearing a yellow knitted sweater. Yeah. And um, Karen, you were awesome. It was so good to meet you. And Joe that you were with. And who else did we meet? We met We met Cheryl from our yes, Ravelry group. Crafty from our, Lane. Yeah. So, so nice. Then. Yeah. And her friends too. Yep. Um We met I, a lot of people, so I'm not good at remembering I know. everybody's name. I know, same here. Um, and uh I wasn't And I felt bad there was one um lovely young viewer who wanted she, she her friend wasn't there yet and so she was hoping she would bump into us again, and we never did bump into Oh, again, sorry about that. We were around until yeah, we, we melted. <laughs> yeah, we actually were just a little bit adjacent to where we said we'd be. So because yeah. because we found a shady spot, and we thought we were close enough, 
Yeah. So hopefully everybody. That, Although I, I think because we sent people once we found out that people were, were like go up there. We were in the, yeah. So so like Caitlin ran over and she I think did. Cheryl and Caitlin over. was there, of course. Mm -hmm. Lovely Caitlin. Uh, she came with her mom and her baby, mm -hmm. and it was delightful to. Uh, spend some time with Caitlin and her mom and baby B yeah. uh, as well. So yeah, it yeah, was a good weekend. It was really good. It was fun, but it was just too hot. It was far too hot. I yeah. was dehydrated. <laughs> I was bright red. <laughs> yeah, it was, especially by the end of the day, like it just, even mm -hmm. drinking water, it just really. Well, did you notice that as we were arriving, people were leaving? I think if, if they were smart, they got in yeah. really early and then were leaving before the midday. Yeah. You know, because we, I thought 11 o'clock was a good time. And normally that would be a good time to meet up, but it was too hot. But anyway, yeah, it was anyway. great. And thank you for for coming out. I hope you all had a good time at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool. That was my first festival since COVID. Yeah. And um, if you went on Sunday, uh, we're sorry we weren't there, but yeah. I hope you had a great time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it was cooler and a bit more cloudy as well. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so um, do you want to show what you oh, from gosh, yes. Sheep and Wool? Yes, I didn't. No, I'm totally spoiled. I don't buy a lot anywhere else anymore. It used to be I was completely rabid to get to a festival and just throw <coughs> my money at people. And of course, I spend money a lot now for the woolly thistle, so I'm less inclined to to need that scratch. You've got mega itched. stash. I got. I got a stash. <laughs> so, but I did but buy. But things coming in all the time. I know, so. I know, I know. Um, I did. Um, we stopped at uh, many, many stalls. Um, and Jennifer, if you're watching this, I'm sorry we missed you. Uh, we, we missed you. I'm sorry. I, I like to always pop in. Jen and Ruth. I don't know if you were there, Ruth, on Saturday. But anyway. Of, of which vendor? Uh, Jennifer is, um, Jen Carey is Sunset Farm okay. from Windsor, Vermont. And I think, Ruth, are you Sunrise Farm also in Vermont? You're like the other half. Anyway, um, I got this lovely dark brown squishy wool from uh, Junction Fiber Mill. They sourced this locally. This is from um, Cornish, which is the town next to where I live in New Hampshire. And it's North Cheviot, North Coast Cheviot. North Country? North Country Cheviot. Um, there's no label on it, but it's so lovely. Look at that color and the squish. Did you get any it's, of this? I didn't get any of that oh, one. I did, the other. I, I did get some stuff from their booth. That's really nice. Um, so we had a nice time chatting with uh, Peggy, who owns uh, Junction Fiber Mill. Mm -hmm. So I got this, and I also picked up something that they're doing, which is so fun. Oh, I got two. Look at these. We have a theme, a color theme going. Now, oh, my goodness. This is American sourced um, tops that they spin down and then sort of barber pull it. Yeah. And I thought, oh, that is so cute. Like a hat or a cowl. I don't know yeah. what yet. Or a shifty. Yeah. Shifty I don't, something. Yeah. You probably have enough for the cowl. Yeah. Well, I know where to go to get more. So, yeah. yeah I really, I think that's so fun. Yeah. So, so I had fun in their booth. As we chatted, I kept picking up. I know you <laughs> You were. It's like, oh, I was just going to get the one. Um, <clears throat> and it does. It reminds me of that. Fun, but I really like the. Yes, exactly. I figured I'd, I figured I'd play with that. Yeah. Um, and then I got um, Peggy from Junction Fiber Mill. She owns Savage Heart Farm. Yes. And these are her Cory Dale. Which is a local test um, in Vermont. So though. they're both natural, undyed. Yeah. Um, Sorry, that's just my big yeah, hand. Yeah, no, no. Gorgeous. So they do. Gorgeous. They're really nice, and I don't together. know if I'll use them together or not. Probably. I'll at a minimum I'll use these together. Um, they're really pretty. Yeah. It it's feels squishy. really good. Yes. Yeah, good so squish. That was all I bought. I was hoping to find. Um, there's a weaver who who's been there before, and she does these gorgeous tea towels. Yeah. And I did not find her this time. So. That's what I was. That's what I was in the market for. Oh my gosh! Look what just arrived. <laughs> Excuse us, while we have a wee I know. gander. So we um, we've been selling these because we knew they were arriving today. So we'll be getting your orders out to you. In fact, mm -hmm. they'll be on their way by the time you see this. Yes. They may the, be in your hands by the time you see this. Argyle, Argyle's Secret Coast. And Kate Davies just always does an Secret. amazing job. Job, 
Look at the photography. Yeah. I can't wait. This is coming home with me and I will be I know. Knitting this. I mean uh, reading this. Look at the snowdrops. I miss snowdrops. Ugh. I love this cowl. Such a pretty color too. There's a hat in here too that I've been eyeballing for just the since I first saw it, you know how like it just sticks in your like ooh. Here's a nice old map of Scotland. Just so you can figure out where, where she's talking about. So good. Ugh. I like how her books too, they're like the patterns are amazing, but there's so much more than the patterns. Oh, the essays are amazing. I mean that that's what I mean. I will be reading this because it's so interesting. And you just learned so much. Exactly. I like I like this little vest. That would be a very quick knit. And she knits it in her she Hellion, which is 50 gram skeins, but I don't know off the top of my head. Sizing is gauge specific. I'll figure that out. I'm sure we could provide yarn for such ooh, such a thing. I like this. What a quick, fun, comfy knit. Yes. The hat she's wearing there. I can't yeah. find the instruction, but the, the crown of it is stunning. Huh. Look at the color work on this. Gorgeous. Kate Davies, so good. seriously good stuff. Um, her books are part of my library at home because, yeah. you know, th there is really good information and just good reading and beautiful patterns that are timeless and will last for, you know, you could knit any of her patterns at any point in time. Yeah. So that just came in and thanks to Josh for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we have these in the shop and, um, oh, well, do you want to tell us what you're knitting? Yes. Yeah. I'm still working on my hat. Oh, me too. <laughs> hat is slow. I've been pretty monogamous. I've not really um uh, here it enjoyed is. Enjoyed this. Let's see. You have enjoyed this, you I said? have enjoyed this. I've oh, enjoyed good. it so much. I thought you said I have not enjoyed it. No, I've this. really enjoyed it. So I've yeah. I'm I'm not always super monogamous <laughs> with my knitting. But you but have been more so with So this. all the other whips I have, they've just been languishing and I know it's. I just got really a whiff. Good. That's so good. It smells really good. So I am oh, on oh, the oh, applied oh. order. Oh, how gorgeous! That just finishes know, it isn't off. Isn't it going to be amazing? That is amazing. That is gorge. Is it? I think this is fun to knit. I I'm enjoying it now that I'm kind of getting into the rhythm of it, and I'm like, oh, all right. And, it, it, and it you're took seeing me. you're seeing how it really does add to the shawl. Now that's it not to say you have bit. you don't have yeah. to do it, but I think it's going to really work for your shawl. Yeah, because you got the dark brown in the middle too. Oh. Yeah, I've seen shawls both ways, like yep. ones with and without, and they're all they're all Grady's. Um, yeah, she did Grady's. I don't think she has it with her today. Maybe Damn. we can show next time. Yeah, next time. Show it for next because time. she did a, an I cord cast off uh, without doing the. Oh, sorry. Yeah, is it the, the Icelandic bind off that? Oh yeah, I'll maybe have that's to, We'll ask Grady. Yeah, we'll show maybe it next we'll time. We'll get Grady. Grady come in. Exactly. So you'll know Grady because she's our customer service um, person, and she's yeah. absolutely wonderful and answers a lot of your questions. So yeah, we should ask her if she wants to join yeah. us. Maybe she'll be less timid than Tina. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Tina someday, but we'll yeah. sort of Grady. We'll invite Grady since she and I think she's even working on an. I think she hat. might. Yes. So, so we're all hap hap crazy I don't, here. I don't know. Um, that's yeah, gorgeous, that's what I'm working on. Maggie. I'm still working on my hap. The cone is getting smaller. This is using up a lot. And well, you're doing the the. Full, I'm doing the full hap. Yeah. And the full large, right? Yeah. So the blanket. So I'm here. <sighs> I'm here and that's my midpoint. So if I fold this over, if you hold that, there we go. We're getting there. Oh look, I'm almost there. I am almost there. And then I can start on the edging. How exciting. Yeah, that means you've got to make some color choices. I know. I'm actually thinking, it's so funny, maybe I was channeling this kind of thing, but I was thinking of pinks and oranges and mm -hmm. reds because that, that would, would be, go. Those with... would go really pretty. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking is these warm tones. Yeah. I love that. So I'm knitting on that. That's a good idea. But I also brought, I'm not finished it. Okay. But my Ooh. green victory. I love that green. Isn't it juicy? I love juicy colors. So I have steeked it, as you can mm. see. 
and I have an I cord all the way around it but I still have to sew in ends and I still have to put on my little buttony things but I did an I cord edging all around everywhere oh, we buttoned it up really fast didn't it? it does this is this is faster tonight than that hat <laughs> for sure I'll wear it I'll show it to you next time um that, that we uh... I only laugh because that is the large hat <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, so I'm really happy with it. I did, I did bus shaping um, here at the bust area, but I did no waist shaping. So it goes, so I increased stitches for the bust and then I go, just go straight down. And it's going to be like a little jacket, I think, which will be And really you're going nice. to use the Norwegian yes, clasps? I am going to use the Norwegian clasps here. And I think I've decided on this ribbon, which I had from us, but it was Ooh. in my stash. Yeah. Yeah that so i think this that'll be so pretty the green and the pink you know there is it is the yeah, same green it is the same green it looks great mm -hmm. so i'll tack down my my stick i did not reinforce this i do not recommend that you don't reinforce it you know but you don't need to um <laughs> <laughs> yeah my, just for legal purposes <laughs> you should really reinforce but you don't need to and you know if you use the right wool then you don't need to reinforce so uh, this is rama vams which is very woolly and uh, i'm going to tack that down put the ribbon on it for decoration and that'll be lovely yeah so I'm super happy with this. Very nice. It knits up fast. I could knit these till the cows come home, honestly, because each stitch, there's far fewer stitches in this. And it's not a complicated knit and it doesn't have to be. Um, yeah, and I'll, 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 maybe what I need to do is get back into my Ravelry and putting my product, my finished projects in my library. And I can put maybe the notes about not including yeah. uh, waist shaping, which is very simple. So yeah, if you have any interest in knitting the Victory Cardigan, we do have a course and we have kits and you can get them together and there's currently a wee deal. If you buy them together, you get some money off of the course. The course is me taking you from soup to nuts. So don't be afraid of this. Don't be afraid of sticking. I swear to goodness, you don't need to be afraid of it. Uh, follow the course, use the right yarn. So get the kit if you want. And then you two can knit this. And you might have seen my ad on Facebook for this. <laughs> There's a little video. And I'm blah, 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 blah. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this and think about knitting it. Um, it's a nice knit. And that yarn is soft. What else did you get? I just saw that you oh, got other things. I did. I bought, so I bought some fiber to spin. Yeah. Um, I could not resist this woman's booth. It was really beautiful. She had hand spun yarn samples as oh, well. God. So, so um, she's called? She's called Fantastic Farm. Mm -hmm. um, she has an Etsy shop, mm -hmm. Fantastic Farm, mm -hmm. and I don't even know which one this is. Border so Lester this Lambswool. one's a Border Lester Lamb's Wool. So this is for your spinning. Yeah, oh, so I'll just spin golly. It. Um, this was sort of an impulse as I was checking out. I was like, "Oh, get this one too." Like, um, I'll read what she wrote in our card. Yeah. All of my hand spinning fiber is grown here on our homestead or sourced locally from other small farms. I choose each fleece for its special characteristics and I hand process the fiber from beginning to end for complete control over texture and color. I'm particularly fond of the luster and the gentle crimp, crimp of the long wool breeds. I also... Uh, I use low twist and long staple length on each of my single ply yarns, giving them a nice hand along with yeah. durability. She had a beautiful like shelf just I have, with her single. I have photos, so we'll put them there. Oh, they were they were stunning. It's just fun to um, to meet these local vendors. Too. And then she had I love it. It's in this beautiful bag. Yeah. This one's a, a bat. It's hand carded bat with Coopworth linen, silk, Gotland, lamb locks, and Wensleydale. <laughs> And um, it's, um, her yarn, seeing her yarns, oh, they were just, I mean, like, look at that. Oh, that is amazing. And the colors are just, they've got me. Yeah. It's just, it's well, well, how will you spin this? So I'll probably like open it up and take a look at what it looks like when I open it up. Mm. And I've never quite, sp I've spun from a bat before. And um, a lot of times I'll strip it, Uh huh. Um, just strip off the side and then and then just put that through yeah so and i'll probably aim to spin it so that it does like she does mm -hmm. with the long mm -hmm. singles yarn um just look though look at these 
locks. Um, that must be the one sleigh deal, or is there mohair in here, did you say? Um, okay. It could be the Gotland. It says Gotland lamb locks. Oh, so those are probably oh, the Gotland lamb locks. Just amazing. Yeah. What an artist. I know. And I know that you'll make beautiful yarn with it. Yeah, so I'll, mm -hmm. we'll see. I have, I started spinning for a half, as one does. <laughs> Um, well, need, next so, year we need to do, uh, you know, a, a spin to knit a hat. Wow. That would be that wow. Would be Especially amazing. seeing I don't spin. <laughs> but maybe I could find, I could source some hand spun and, you know, we could all go out and find our own hand spun or make our own. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I figure, I don't know, but I only have one spinning wheel um, and that's prop, that is for the best. Um, otherwise, it, things would really get out of hand. So one spinning project at a time. So but yeah, you're really, really thinking about doing that. <clears throat> spinning for a hat? Mm -hmm. No, it's in progress. Like, oh, you're so already that, doing it? Yeah, it's in progress. What are you using for yarn? Um, I'm for trying wool? to remember what it is. I think it's like a Beauchemin. Um, that's the name of the. There was a gentleman in town who got my name. Um, his wife is no longer able to spin, and he was like. Uh, de-stashing a bunch of her stuff so oh wow um, I got there was quite a bit of this which is why I think it's good for and it's nice and wooly it's pin drafted roving yeah yeah so oh. um I'll bring that in hopefully I'll at least have one skein finished soon. that would be awesome bring in I've been fluff. so busy knitting mine that I'm not yes spinning as much, yes, but, yes 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 so. yes well listen I think we should go to um who are we going to go to first is it Kelsey we are going to go to Kelsey first and she's going to give you a glimpse of something new we have coming to the shop and we will talk more about it when we get back and don't forget we have another prize to give away we have Emma and we have Rachel so we'll see you back after Kelsey yep. one Hi everyone, I'm back to talk about a few things that I've been working on, that I've finished, and a new yarn that we have coming to the Molly Thistle. So first of all, in, in honor of the HapCal, I wanted to share a blanket that I've um, recently finished. It's not technically a Hap, um, it's knit in a worsted weight, first of all. Second of all, it's neither a square nor a triangle, <laughs> um, and third, it's not a traditional Shetland pattern, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is called the Oaken, O-A-K-E-N, blanket by Tin Can Knits. It comes both in a rectangle, which is what I've knit here, pattern, or in a triangle, more of a traditional shawl shape. Um, I knit this from stash yarn, just different yarns that I had that I thought went well together. Um, the blue and the orange are just breed specific yarns that I had that were just dyed in fun colors. The white lace is actually two different farm yarns that I had from local farms um, and they've all really worked well together and I'm pretty psyched about that first of all. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the construction. I'm not giving anything away with the pattern. Um, again it's Oaken by Tin Can Knits but what you actually do is you cast on in the middle here along this line here in exactly the same way that you would cast on for a toe-up sock. So if you use Judy's Magic Cast On, a Turkish cast on, um, effectively you're trying to make an invisible or fairly invisible seam right through the middle here. And then what you're doing is you knit around and around and around sort of a hot dog shape, increasing at these corners to make these sorts of seams and you just go and go and go and go and go. And luckily for me, about one skein of worsted weight, I think it was about 220 yards, give or take, got me to more or less the pattern requirement for the lace. You, you're knitting garter stitch. So yes, it is knitting one round and then purling the next round and then knitting one round, but you're always doing these increase lines in the knit. So the increase gives you this nice, sharp, seam. So in some ways it's sort of similar to when you start, um, especially uh, Gudrun Johnston's more modern approach to a hap shawl where you start in the middle. Um, hers are generally, generally squares instead of rectangles. Um, but that honestly, it's these are even increases. These increases and these increases are at exactly the same rate. It's only a rectangle because of this line in the middle. It would have been a square if you'd started more at a pinhole cast on and increased evenly into in four directions. 
So then what I think makes it more like a half shawl is the lace section. Again, not traditional Shetland lace exactly, but as with all lace, it's just a series of knit two togethers, yarn overs, you know, getting your um, knit two togethers and your slip slip knits to get some stitches that slant in different directions. And then when you block it out, which this actually hasn't been blocked yet, just shows the weight of worsted and how it stretches out laces, um, you end up with this lacy pattern. And then finally, you just have another series of garter rows and an I-cord bind off. I am notorious for running out of yarn. And because this was a stash project, I only had so much yarn. I knit one skein worth in the orange, two skeins worth in the lace. And as you can see, because you're going from the center out, you lose width as you go. The blue is actually also one skein worth. So you can see the difference, if I back up, the difference in thickness of the orange, the white, and the blue. Um, so I did run out of the blue before I finished my I-cord and managed to find a yarn that was a little speckled that had both blue and orange and kind of a gray in it. So while you see this side is the I-cord in blue, this side is the I-cord in the speckle. Um, I actually really like it. Um, I sort of wish that I had done the I-cord at the beginning um, and done, didn't have these blue edges, but you learn. And I wasn't gonna rip out that much I-cord, frankly. Um, so I just wanted to show a pattern that is hap-ish. It's not as much of a commitment as a big, you know, multi-thousands of yards traditional hap. It's clearly not as uh, light. It's clearly not as drapey. I think it's a pretty nice small lap blanket or crib blanket, baby blanket. Um, and it's actually really fun. You d it does get a little bit, if you don't like garter stitch and you don't, or you don't like purling, it can, some of these sections can get a little bit tedious, but you can knit this either as multicolor, single color, um, use up stash yarns, use up some of the fun breed specific yarns that the Wooly Thistle carries. Um, you could knit it at a different gauge. It would just give you a different size in the end. Um, these are all worsteds, but you could knit Erin, you could knit DK. Um, I just thought it was a really great pattern and it has a lot in common with a lot of the hap shawls that I've been seeing people knitting in the Ravelry group and the Facebook group. So I just thought I would share, jump in and share this hap adjacent project maybe, <laughs> if you'll let me. Um, but I will say it is over 80 degrees in Vermont today, which is so abnormal for May. It's a little upsetting, but this is getting pretty warm on my lap. So I'm going to move on. The second thing I wanted to share is the next project that I'm working on. Um, I'm not a huge sock knitter. I'll say that. Um, vanilla socks, just plain stockinette socks, to me can get a little bit tedious. Um, I like, I'm a process knitter, so I like thinking, I like following charts, I like all these things. That's something that I have really, really, I think I've talked about this before. Someone definitely has. The 52 weeks of mm, socks, <laughs> if I can get this label to go down, socks book by Lina Magazine is fantastic because it has, as it mentions, 52 patterns. But most of them are complex in their, in different ways but not in a way that is something you can't handle. It's not intimidating, it's not scary. The way that the patterns are written are very clear. Um, and because it's such a popular book, there's a lot of guidance that you can find online. So I am knitting the Hardichoke socks. I'll show you the name, Hardichoke. That's the pattern picture. Can't really tell up with what's going on because it's a little small. Um, but this is how it's knitting up. This is I'm knitting this in West, York, West Yorkshire Spinners Signature Four Ply in the color Cardamom. It's sort of a light olive color. It's a little bit greeny tan. Um, you could call it somewhere in the camouflage family, one of those, you know, when they have multicolored camouflage, this would be one of the greens. Um, I just think it's really kind of a classic color that shows off texture really well because it's still pretty light in, in tone. Um, 
This is a fantastic yarn. <laughs> I don't know why it's taken me so long to try it. The Wooly Thistle has had it in stock forever. I have other skeins of it and there are Christmas yarns and, and other things. Um, and I just have never reached for it and I have no idea why. <laughs> it's 75% um, wool, 25% nylon, and 35% of that 75%, so 40% of something else, but 35% is BFL, Blue Flake blue faced Lester and it's all um, made in the UK. So it's a really fantastic yarn for showing all of this texture in these socks. The socks are actually cast on from the bottom up, which is not necessarily my go-to. I do like a heel flap, but this one caught my eye because it has sort of an integrated, now my needles are everywhere, but it kind of an integrated heel flap. If you can see that, so it's got some the gusset right here. You would do some short rows at the bottom here. And then you knit the heel flap with the decreases that run along this line. And I know my fingers are getting in the way of showing you all of that. But the effect, the, the technique is different, but I think the shape is going to end up being fairly similar to a pretty square heel flap and gusset. I'm not a huge fan, fan of straight um, short row heels. I find they tend to be really shallow. I have a fairly um, high instep. So they don't tend to fit my sock, my feet very well. But it, look at this gusset. It built in this pretty significant gusset. And you can see even it's more 3D than I'm even letting it be because it's puffing out a little bit to show how sort of kind of generous that heel width is. Um, so again, you, you start at the bottom, you knit these kind of fun cables right along this line that set up the twisted rib. Twisted rib goes all the way up, and then up on the leg, you start this lacy pattern. It's called artichoke. I mean, in the color, <laughs> it definitely starts looking like artichokes. Um, but it's actually a really fun, easy to memorize pattern. You do have to move the beginning of round a few stitches back and forth, um, depending on where you are in the lace. But I think it's gonna fit really well because you have both the twisted rib and this lace that pulls it back in. Um, but it's still a really accessible pattern. Um, and as you can see, I knit my Socks Magic Loop. These are US 1.5s, um, which I'm really enjoying. The last pair of socks that I knit, I knit on US zeros. I wasn't enjoying that as much, um, it just, was a little too small, a little too tight. I had have pretty big hands. Um, and I don't actually think that this gauge is going to be that different between the two pairs of socks. I think the clearly the US zeros are going to be a tighter fabric. Um, but I think this is just gonna be just fine. This, the yarn itself is really filling in stitches, but it still has some good elasticity. And I'm just, I'm really enjoying it. So those are the Heart of Choke socks from 52 Weeks of Socks using West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4-ply in one of their solids, the cardamom color. And the last thing that I want to talk about is probably actually the most exciting to people other than me, because it's not just my project. And it is some new yarns that are coming to the Wooly Thistle. They're called Wool Dreamers. And this is their manch, I don't know if it's pronounced manchalope, but it feels like it should be, or manchalope, um, is as it implies, it is an unspun fiber. It does come off the ball as two, so it's sort of naturally doubled, but you can definitely knit it as a single. Um, you can twist it as you knit if you want, but you definitely don't need to. And like plotilope, it just kind of pulls apart, but then fairly easily, and I didn't even spit on this because I didn't really want to on camera, it kind of folds back together. Um, so if you've knit with Plotilope, this is another option that's going to be similar. I find it to be a little bit squishier. Um, it doesn't have the guard hairs that Icelandic wool has. I believe this is Spanish Merino. Um, but it's sort of that rustic. If you've knit with Spanish Merino or French Merino, that's a little more on the rustic side. I don't mean rustic rustic. I just mean not super washed Merino, more or less. So they have the unspun version. 
This is uh, gray number one, so gray one is this color. But they also have two spun versions. I believe these are different sheep breeds and we'll have all the information on the Woolly Thistle website when we have these um, in stock and ready to go. Um, but they do make a fingering weight. So this is the swatch that I knit up in fingering weight. Um, it's very round, it's very crisp. Um, it has less of a halo than some other yarns that we sell. Uh, it's a, if you took fennel garn from Rauma and gave it a little extra roundness, a little maybe a little extra twist to it, um, a little extra smoothness, um, you would get something close to this yarn. I knit this on a US 3 and got 26 stitches to 4 inches. So you could definitely go down farther. Um, you could definitely knit it, I would say, even down to 30, 32. Um, it does not have nylon. It's not particularly designed for sock knitting, but it does have a nice crisp hand, nice round stitch, um, and you could do a lot with it. And you could also go up. You could go up in needle sizes and get some really nice lace out of it. And to go back to the unspun, I kind of messed around a little bit. I started with US 8, knitting the two strands together. So when, you're, when I said it came off the ball in two strands, it does. It comes off the plate with these guys paired up with each other. So I started with that. I knitted a US 8 and got about 16 stitches. But that's pretty, it's still pretty, pretty good. It's a very squishy, it's got almost a, a, if, a if cotton balls were made out of wool, if that makes any sense. It's got a fleecy feel. Like if you've gone to a sheep and wool festival or, you know, seen a sheep and felt the fleece, um, it's really not that far from just fleece, which I think is really awesome. Um, you get the same lightness that you do with Plotilope, uh, but the texture is just a bit different. It's a bit crimpier, I think. Um, it's a bit fuzzier in a more traditional fuzzy cotton ball sense. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm very interested to see what people decide to do with it. Cause there's some designers who have put out patterns specifically for this yarn. And I'm also curious if, how people would substitute it into a plochilope pattern or just a regular pattern knit for spun yarn and, and see what happens. Because here, is it held doubled? Here I held it single by itself. So this is on a US 5 held single strands, so you can see how it's definitely more transparent than the double. Um, but this was knit up at about a tw about 20 stitches, um, 20, 21 stitches per four inches. And then I knit the double strand again, but on the US five, so tighter. So this was the eight, these two are on fives. On a five, I got about 18. So it didn't vary a lot, but the fabric is very different from the five on the single and the five on the double. And then I wanted to see what I could do, how far I could push it. And you can see my mouth through this. This is two strands, but on a US 11. Um, I got about 12 stitches. So I think this would be a really cool kind of outer layer cardigan. You could make a fun scarf or a shawl with this. Just wanted to illustrate with these four different fabrics that are made from the same yarn, just single or doubled and on different needles, that you can get some really cool, really different results depending on how you knit it, if it's doubled, what needle size, like see how much tighter this one is than this one? Um, what you can get from the different, different applications of this yarn. So again, that is Wool Dreamers. It's, from, it's a company in Spain. And the unspun is called Mashalope and a fingering weight. So that's all I really had to say. I wanted to share my, my HAP-ish project, my so current sock project, and these swatches in this new yarn. Um, so I hope you're all having a great time with the HAP Cal. I uh, hope maybe you have a socks project on the side for when you're out and about and you need something in your, in your bag or in your backpack. Um, and I hope you try, you try these new Wool Dreamers yarns. It's, 
really nice to get sometimes a really close to the animal, really close to the sheep, unspun yarn that maybe is a little bit different than something you've tried before. Maybe you've knit four sweaters in Letlopi or Plotilopi and you really love them, but you want to try something else. I think this would be a great option. Or maybe your, your skin is more sensitive or you're knitting for someone who's, who is, and the Icelandic wools just don't quite fit that bill. Um, I think these wool dreamers yarns would do, would do some really good things for you. So I just wanted to pop in and share some things and I hope you're all enjoying your knitting. Bye. So yeah, thank you, Kelsey, for that wonderful segment. And then there you were talking about Wool Dreamers, which we just got in the shop. And look at this. You, Maggie has disappeared. I have disappeared. <laughs> so we have both their lines. Yeah. Um, you're holding their 100% Merino. Yes. Merino. But it's Spanish merino and it's very kind of rustic and it's um And when we non say rustic, wash. it's it's still merino. Yes. So it's it's soft. But it it's, our, it's not as soft it's our as kind of merino. It, it feels woolly. Like, it does. It doesn't It's nice. It's it's it's, it's really, really nice. nice. Yes. Yeah. So we'll talk more about that too. And here you can see that I'm holding this beautiful bump of different colours of their manchalopi which is, if you've knit with Plutolopi, very, very similar and feels similar, like a baby. But with some, I feel like with some fairly big differences. Yes. Like it looks... <laughs> it's <laughs> soft. Like cuddling it. It is really soft. It is. It is soft. It is soft. Oh, my so. God. So which, which do you want to talk about first, Maggie? Um, why don't we talk about what you're... You want to talk about what you're holding first? Okay. Okay. These so are... um, this is Manchalopi. And uh, yes, very similar to Plutolopi in that it is unspun. They come in 100 gram uh, plates and there is no label with them. So we will just pop them in, the, in your bag like this. And um, it comes with two plies, as it were. Well, two strands. Where's this other one? So uh, it comes with two strands that you can knit together and it makes a sort of DK weight. Yeah. Or you can knit it one strand at a time and it's a light fingering. I think you get about 500 yards out of one plate. This is a very pale blue color. And um, we will do some videos soon just showing how to knit with unspun yarn because I think some people are mystified and we would like to help you understand what you're doing and that it's okay if it breaks. It's very easy to put back together. But yeah. for those of you who know um, and understand Plotilopi, you're going to love this. Yes, I did knit a swatch. They sent us some samples, and I know. Uh, yes, um, but it is. It's really nice. It's so soft. Um, it was. It, I've knit with Plotilopi before. It felt very similar, mm -hmm. but also kind of different. Like this has more squish. It feels like it's more feel more bouncy. Yeah, there's more bounce or sponginess even, and yeah. softness for sure. I mean, I love Plotilopi, yes. and Absolutely. we we love and we're still stocking Plotilopi. Absolutely. But it doesn't hurt to have another uh, similar Lopi yarn. Well, and I think since we know we love that, we, we thought we would love this, mm. um, and we really. But do. we were we were really delighted by the feel of this. Yeah. We were not expecting, I think, it to feel so. I was good. expecting it to feel more rustic, but it's mm. it's soft. It um, is, and even once knitted, and once knitted, it's very strong. You don't need to worry about anything. You know, yeah. it's just in the cake or the the plate that <laughs> you want to be gentle when you're knitting, but. Um, you yeah. don't you don't have to be too precious about I mean, it and i usually we will get some video but i usually pull from the outside of the plate i unwind it yes. first and then knit a bit then unwind some exactly more. it did pull apart while i was knitting with it i just sliced it yep. back together and yep. off you go yeah you don't have to be too um, worried about any of that so we've got seven colors um it comes in these three dyed shades pink blue and green which is just very spring-like and lovely and of course we have these naturals and uh, let's see. Oh, God, I, I'm just blown away. Yeah. So these four, they're brands going from dark to cream. And they're gorgeous. This would make the most beautiful Ito shawl. I know it would, yeah. Um, um, but it calls for six. It does. So, so you, you would have, have to have spread to it over, you over would, four. You would have to adjust for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, and we just had I'm some just, Ito. like the colors are very similar. I think it's loftier than Plutolopi, isn't it? I mean, it just, I think if we were to hold a Plutolopi next to it, 
it would seem more um, dense, maybe. Yeah. This has got a lot of loft. Oh, it's so good. I'm it so is, excited. Is, really and this good. is from Spain. Yeah. So Arid Spain, but they have their own sheep breeds. And uh, the people are Wooly Dreams. Nope. Wool Dreamers <laughs> is trying to um, use up the fiber because the Mancha sheep mm -hmm. are primarily cheese, dairy sheep. You know, you've heard of, uh, what's it called? Manchego cheese. Manchego cheese. And now they're using their wool. And oh my goodness, whoever thought of doing this is a genius. Yeah. I am really, I have to knit with this. This is lovely. Absolutely lovely. They spun some into this lovely uh, ply yarn. Um, Although I think this actually is a different breed. This, sure enough, you're right. I think, yeah, this is a different breed. You're right. This is the, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to say was, this wrong. It's the Dehesa de Barrera. Very good. Dehesa de it's Barrera. Edition, proudly spawned from one of the best flocks of Spanish merino sheep. Mm -hmm. Does it say what kind of ply it is? Is it a two ply? It says, it doesn't say. It says fingering. Yeah, it, it's a fingering. It's, um... 448 yards. And the label is in Spanish. I know the label is in Spanish. Um, but the, the yardage is in there and we can yeah. understand that. It's 448 yards. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a light fingering or yeah. on the light side, but not, not very light. But I think too with a merino, you're going to get that poof. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. this this feels um, gorgeous too. I think this... Um, this is my kind of merino. I, I just am gushing because yeah. it, it's not it's not super washed. It's not super super soft, but it's smooth and it's got a nice ply to it. I will need to investigate and uh, take apart some of the yarn. To see. I know I know super wash has its place, but I like the bounce and mm -hmm. the sort of the life that it keeps in the yarn when it's yes non yes super wash. And they have a lovely label. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big merino sheep. Did you already show the red? I did. I showed the red. So um, I don't know if these have colors. I pulled the color card. I think this is a three ply. So they have numbers and names. So okay. So the green, wait, the red is rojo. I can say that. Yep. And this orange, light orange, is mostaza. Number ten forty eight. <laughs> yeah, ten forty eight. The pink rosa, nineteen oh five. That's so pretty. This green is Verde 323. Gorgeous. Yes, some naturals. Yeah. It's an undyed natural. Lovely and creamy. Mm -hmm. Really big, voluptuous skeins. This here is color 210. Yep, and it's Verde, Verde Lima. Verde Lima, so a very light green. Pretty. Like, I'll show it next to the, there you go, you can see the green yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. um, and then Azul. Gorgeous. 41.27. I should, you should do this one. This is your kind of color. Um, your, this one? Yeah. Your skin tone. <laughs> <laughs> it, you just look so creamy with it. 13.09 Tierra. Pretty. And then this is 14.06, which is a taupe, very light taupe, and it's called Tierra. Nope. Gris, gray. This is their gray. Gris? I don't know how you say it. And then, I'm going to say this wrong. I'm sorry. Azul Cielo. Ooh. And it's 47.19. And then do we have the dark orangey color here? This one is 12.46. Acrea? Acrea? Acrea, maybe? Gorgeous. Very foxy orange. Um, these are lovely. They are. Really I'm nice. very excited about this mm -hmm. whole uh, brand coming to the shop. Yes, I love them. Mm -hmm. I've, I've had them sitting on mm -hmm. my desk. They keep moving from desk to. I know, is it a good answer? Yes. Um, yes. 
Good for lots of things. Now, what about um, patterns and support of that nature? Do we have much um, information? I know the wool dreamers, the the mantelope, Um, We've seen Ozetta knitting with that. She of has course. a new, um, it looks really pretty. Uh, it looks very wearable too. It's called the Miles Jacket. So we'll, um, Ozetta is on Instagram and uh, we'll put that there so you can go check out her designs yeah. in the mantelope. Yeah, and if you head to the shop page, we'll put some pattern recommendations We sure on will. There. We'll, yeah we'll take care of that gorgeous very very nice so and good. from spain mm -hmm. so a new a new vendor a new part of the world coming to us and of course we have retro zaria representing portugal mm -hmm. which is awesome it's going global <laughs> <laughs> they are there so that's exciting that's we there. hope you enjoyed that that is actually going live on tuesday maggie mm -hmm. so that'll be in the shop come tuesday yes so we want to share some Cumbria with you, which has been selling like hotcakes. The book came in and your pre-orders are going out. Uh, this, of course, is Marie Wallen's new book, which is just lovely with beautiful, really good. beautiful, pretty designs. Perfect. Did you know this is Georgia's husband-to-be who's also mm -hmm. modeling with her? <laughs> bonus so we got a lot of inquiries about this particular sweater and so we put together some kits for that it's got that little flared peplum yes. waist twisted stitches twisted stitches is lovely and uh, we put together i think six kits out of the book yep that one and the two on the cover bessie boot that's the one we just showed. That's actually a place, I believe. If you watch the interview with uh, Marie, she shows you all of so them. Cat bells is what George is wearing. Yep, yeah. and this is trout. Trout Beck. Trout Beck. Yeah. Oh, we don't have a kit for this, but it's another men's. Yeah, there's three men's sweaters. sweaters. Um, two and cardigans. they're available in size extra small. So if you. Yes, if you want to knit one for yourself, you oh, could probably you manage it. I hope to be knitting this soon, which is Karis, and it's a sleeveless vest. And she writes her patterns to be knitted uh, flat usually, although Cat Bells is in the round and some of the others are yeah, in the round. Yeah, yeah. So my so plan pretty. for this is to knit it in the round and to um, put in a little faux seam down the sides and then we'll stick here and here and here. There's a lot of pretty designs in Lindmar, here. One more, yeah. I don't know that that's a kit though, we but you, we do them. have individual balls for sale so that you we can do make your own. For Rydal. Mm -hmm. I believe that's knitted in the round as well. Yes. Yeah. Pretty. Like oh, and I love the it's scarf, Swaledale scarf. You could just join that and make it into a cowl. And that actually is her Borough cowl reinvented with these new colors. Yeah, which was in, in the book Shetland. And her. His and her hats or just different colorways. Yeah. Yeah. And the sweater he's wearing is also in there. Yes, I want to say that's the Glen Riding. This one is held double, so it's really thick. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's in one of the new colors. Yes. Which we have. Yes, so that's yes, it. Yes. There are all the... All the designs. Lovely, <laughs> lovely book. I think the quality of the um, photography is really good. Mm -hmm. The book itself is good quality. And um, yeah, yeah. Although you might want to um, photocopy the, the 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 charts are always so big. You might want to photocopy them and blow yeah. them up a bit. It depends which pattern you're using. Some of them where it's an all over repeat, it is, it's a larger chart. Yep. Um, and uh, although we do have the PDFs that we can share with you as well, if you want yeah. the electronic copy as well, but you you get the physical copy yeah. as well. Do you want to show them the new colors? Oh, let's do that. And why don't we give away the next? Do the uh, next giveaway. Yes. So these are now all of Marie's colors. Do you so, want to tell them which color was missing? Yep. It was this one, foxglove. I got it. All right, thank you. Foxglove was missing. So th thank you for guessing. It was fun reading your guesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of you got it right. We'll announce the winner. Uh, picked at random for the right answer. Mm -hmm. So these are her original 20 colors. And now we have six more. Maybe we could put them all together, like side by side. So this is the whole collection now. And Maggie, why don't we just quickly, um, I don't, yeah. Show yeah, them. so we have Willow. Which is a lovely kind of gorse yellow color. So pretty. Storm. Gray. Is that a natural? 
I don't oh no, I think, think there's so, no. I think there is some dyed um in the wool going on there. Yeah, we've got seagrass. Love greens. Love greens. That's a good green. Yeah. She's got good greens. Yeah. Um ocean. Mm-hmm. Nice blue. Mm-hmm. Walnut. Nice brown. That looks natural to me. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Acer. Acer. Right, and Can then of go? course all these as well. So lots and lots of choice. We're sold out at the moment yep. of the new colors because um, Marie's stuff does sell out, it but does. we are planning another order to come in soon. Especially, I think there was some enthusiasm for the new colors. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah so absolutely. we'll get more of those in as soon as possible. And we do have kits. We have stocked, uh, like we mentioned, those kits, and I believe that we still have some in stock yep. because we just launched all this. And we haven't even started shipping out yet because it's a pre-order and our stock just came in. Yeah. So we'll be putting all those kits together and getting them out to you. So thank you very much for shopping with us on those. They'll be on their way to yeah. you. And the winner who guessed Fox Glove was Rosalie Kramer. She said, another wonderful episode. The fleece washing was fascinating and I'm interested to see more of Caitlin's fleece adventures. So looking forward to see what is in the rest of the taster box. I think that the missing color from Marie Wallen's British Breeds yarn is Fox Glove. She was right. Yep, you were right. Congratulations. So send us an email to info at the Woolly Thistle. Put winner all in capitals so that we can pick you out quickly. And we'll send you that gift certificate so that you can come and shop. Yeah. Well, Rosalie, thank you so much for mentioning the box. Because here it is, this Jagunda box filled with yarn. This is not a light box it's got so much goodness in it so we're going to show you right now a little video we took earlier uh going through everything in the box so enjoy this um it's amazing hello we are super excited to be here with you today to show you what's in these jagunda boxes and uh, these of course are our taster box for this spring maggie's here with me hi maggie so should we show them what's in this box? We should. All right. I'm excited about this. I'm gonna open it up. Oh, and my next tissue paper. Oh, something fell out. It's okay. Okay. So I am. You want to take your tissue paper yeah. off? You might want to tilt your box down a little bit. Oh my goodness! This is the first layer of this box, and. The first layer of that box. So let's get in here and start showing you. There is two layers of yarn in these gigantic boxes and they're just beautiful. I really like the colors in this one. So we're going to show you all the yarn that goes in these boxes, um, who they're from, their weights and things like that. But you're going to trust us with the colors because that's how we have to do these boxes. We get to play with the colors and give you a beautiful box. And that's the surprise element of it is the colors that come in it. Yeah. So starting at the top, I want to show um, Berlin yarn. This is a new color from her, mm -hmm. this particular one. This is called Kauri, and it's a lovely peachy color on gray. Uh, everybody will get a color. What's your color? This one is Field Poppy. Beautiful it's red. Beautiful Oops. heathered red. We get two 50 gram balls of this. Everybody gets the bog cotton, which is the beautiful creamy cheviot. And then you'll get one of the color and there's all different colors. So that comes in. And of course, Berlin yarn is from the island of Bernary, which is in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland. And uh, Meg Rogers is the owner of uh, Berlin yarns and she has Hebridean sheep and they're just wonderful. And here's some of the colors, yes. Oh, all these colors are gorgeous. <laughs> they are. Just gorgeous. And uh, for everyone who buys a box, if there's any yarn left over, you will get first dibs on supplementing the box shortly after yeah. they release. So lots of beautiful colors and... Um, it is a whole rainbow. <laughs> it's a whole rainbow, it's but beautiful. the colors are actually very inspired by uh, the Hebridean landscape. Okay. Uh, sea pinks, which are lovely pink flowers. Um, and the lovely colors of the, the sand and the flowers yep. and the sea. It's just lovely. So we're huge fans of Berlin yep. yarn. Very difficult for us to get this and keep it in stock. So this is very special. Yeah. Yep. Okay, moving along. 
we're giving you two 50 gram skeins of Biche Bouche, which is of course a French uh, yarn company. They source their wool from um, Scottish lambs. So this is Scottish lambs wool and it's so gorgeous and it comes in lots of pretty, pretty colors. So you'll get two skeins of the same color. Not to mention you'll get a um, postcard with suggestions of patterns for using up the yarn that we provide. Yeah. What color is that? It's lovely. This one is turquoise. Gorgeous. And this is yellow mustard. This is a fingering white yes. as well as the Berlin yarns. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> then we have this very, very special sacred skein almost. 100% Gotland wool from the gray sheep. So sheepy. <sighs> It really is. It slows the heart rate. So Gotland is a long stapled wool and so it's going to have lots of drape in it. You and this see does that shine too. And it's got that sheen as well. This is natural Gotland colour. So it's this beautiful grey. And, and it's you can from, tell like it's yes. gonna have so much drape. This is a hundred grams, so you might be able to get um, a shawl out of this. And this is also a uh, four ply, which is fingering white. The Grey Sheep Company. This is Emma in so, um, where she's located, but it's not. It's Hampshire, not far from London actually. She's got a beautiful farm, and she is a shepherdess. So that's good. This this we've never had for sale mm -hmm. in the shop. This is very very special, yeah. limited, very limited. And of course, let's see. We have Aradale, two uh, twenty five gram cakes of Uradale four ply yarn, which are actually their jumper white yarn. Mm -hmm. So it's like Jameson and Smith white. And um, you, all different colors. Here's the cones. Can you see these? So colored. So Uradale arrives to us here on cones and this very special yarn we wind into cakes. Yes. Um, so we have to get several little cakes out of this to share with you. And um, it takes quite a while to do it, but it's worth it. And uh, this is organic, unbleached, native Shetland sheep. Yes. And organic. Did I say organic? You did. And Rowan, this is Rowanberry. It is a new color that we've not had for me. Before. It's beautiful. It's, a, it's, beautiful. it's quite a vibrant, uh, foxy orange. Mm -hmm. But we're also giving you a very special cake from Aradale as well of this cream because this is the lamb's first clip. And that's very limited. You can only get so much and uh, we have it. So this is their first clip. These little sheep are about one years old um, and just beautiful and extra soft. Yeah. So that's exciting. Let's show some bits and pieces then. Um, you can't have too many. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the Knitting Barber cords. These have been such a hit, not just with you and me, Maggie, but with right. uh, everyone. And uh, uh, they come in different colors. You get one large one for the body and two shorter ones for sleeves. And you will use them with everything. Yes. We love them. We love them. So that, you get one of these so you can test it out. There's a lovely little, little tin of mints, which is great. It's got a little thistle on it. Um, we have some lovely color printed tote bags. They're gusseted tote bags with canvas straps. These are great tote bags. And we haven't had color ones in for a while. And right. yes, we have and little stickers little stickers for the woolly thistle. You can stick them on your journal, on your water bottle, on your computer, wherever you want. Okay, so now down to the bottom layer. Oh, oh. oh and then there's one other bit. So we have a whole other layer in there. Um, and I wanted to share the scissors. Oh, yeah. Um, we also have these lovely stork scissors and they're nice and sharp. Got a nice crisp crunch to them. So this will be in your box as well. They'll be protected, don't worry. We won't let that get to the yarn. All right, so in the bottom here, let's see. We have Jameson and Smith two-ply lace weight, four whole balls. And you'll get all the same color. This is so soft. It is. This is amazing. That's a great color. I love this color. What color is that? This is color L5. <laughs> and this here is 203. Mm -hmm. So we went for mostly uh, neutral colors. We do have some in blue as well. 
So you'll get a natural uh, selection or some blue, but you'll get all four of the same and they're all amazing, really good. You can knit a whole shawl with just mm -hmm. this. Yeah. And again, we will have a little postcard inside with specially chosen designs to support the box. And then uh, Ul Centrum? Yeah. Ul Centrum is from Sweden. And this is really good stuff. This is two ply. I love this. And it uh, comes in lots of different colors. And these are 100 gram skeins, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yep. And beautiful dye job, beautiful colors. And this yarn is just really, really nice. Yeah. It's going to knit up beautifully. So a nice sport weight, which is good because you can go down to sort of fingering tension or up to a DK. It's very versatile. And then lastly, Maggie, we have not least. not least at all. We have Armscope Manor, which is this beautiful yarn from uh, the Midlands in England and Shakespeare Country. These are two 50 gram balls of Portland wool from Armscope Manor. It is a real manor. From the Tudor times or the Elizabethan times, round about there. So it's a beautiful place. And this yarn is really special. It's uh, rare. It's a conservation breed and it is also mentioned in the Doomsday Book, which is an ancient medieval book. So this makes this breed very, very old mm -hmm. and special. And Deborah at Armscot Manor is doing her bit to keep them going. And we're doing our bit too yeah. by buying her yarn. So this is lovely. So all together, Maggie, that's almost 800 yards of beautiful. Grams. <laughs> Did I say? Yes, 800 grams of, I don't know how many yards that turns into, it's a lot. Um, but of a variety of what's best at the Woolly Thistle. It's really hard to make these boxes because we love everything we have. Yeah. But this is particularly wonderful and all very woolly wool. It and is a great sample and selection of what we do here. It is, isn't it? Yeah. It is. We're excited. So I about hope it. you love everything we've just shown you that's in the box. We're so excited about it. And these will be going on sale very We're soon. To be on our email list so that you find out when this goes on sale. We have a special sign up on the shop so that you can get early access and you want to be on that list. So thanks very much for watching. We hope you're as excited as we are and we'll talk to you soon. So we hope you enjoyed that little sneak peek into what the box is. We are taking names for early sign up. So be sure to go on over to the Woolly Thistle and sign up there. You'll see it right on the homepage, right up front. Um, and there, there'll be a link to it as well, maybe in the show notes mm -hmm. so that you can go yeah. sign up so that you get early access. We want people who really want this to um, be able to get it before the crowds. It's launching on May 27th. That's mm -hmm. its official launch date, but you're getting early access if you sign up. So go, go ahead and do that. And then you'll, um, then you'll be in good stead for grabbing one. There's probably going to be more people that want it that than we have. So you want to, you definitely want to sign you up. You definitely want to sign up for early access. Yes, indeed. So now we should go and visit Emma. Yes. What does Emma have for us today? Emma is talking about summer knitting Perfect. and um, sweater fit. Perfect. So enjoy your time with Emma. Be sure to come back. We have more to share. And of course, we still have Rachel over there and Farrell to yes. catch up with. So we'll see you in a minute. Hi, everyone. My name is Emma Barnaby and I live in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, I like to knit. <laughs> I knit a lot. You've probably seen me here before, unless you're new, in which case, welcome. Uh, I'm here today to talk a little bit about um, vanilla sweaters and vanilla sweater modifications and that kind of thing, but I do also want to spend some time talking about summer knitting and summer knits. So today I'm wearing a t-shirt that I made recently um, and the pattern is Alden, A-L-D-E-N, by Jennifer Steingass, who is a very prolific designer of beautiful yoke patterns. and. You can check out her whole library. She's Knit Love Wool on Instagram and Ravelry, I think. And uh, she's just amazing, beautiful yoke sweaters, a huge variety, and they're gorgeous. And they're in a variety of weights. So one thing I like about um, her yoke patterns is that a lot of her fingering weight patterns are written for a gauge of about 22 stitches over four inches, which is nice and loose. It's not super dense. It's not too warm. Um, it's really good for kind of a summery top. And so this, the Alden sweater, is knit at 22 stitches over four inches. So first of all, that makes the yarn you're using go farther because the looser you're knitting, 
the farther that yarn's gonna go because there's more space in between the stitches. There's just kind of more more space in the sweater. Um, but you know, it'll it'll block up and block block out and, and look nice still. Um, I actually just used a sock yarn, just a commercial bare undyed sock yarn. You can usually get one from um, wherever you prefer to get your sock yarn. For the base, I used two skeins, uh, just under two skeins actually. I made the second size. Um, so yeah, a lot, a little yarn goes a pretty long way. And then my yoke color, which you can see is color changing. This uh, yarn is called Yarn Hero Color Mix Sock. So Yarn Hero is a company that's based out of Frederick, Maryland, which is about an hour west of me um, towards the mountains. And uh, you probably have heard of them if you've heard of Magpie Fibers, because they're also from Frederick, um, which is great. Uh, Frederick is like a little tiny, you know, yarn, <laughs> like heaven. <laughs> it's lots of great stuff there. Um, and uh, yeah, so Yarn Hero, uh, they don't have a store, but uh, Maryland has a, a lot of local kind of festivals like Maryland Sheep and Wool, which was recently, and that was really big. Yarn Hero was there. There's also a Frederick Fiber Festival where I got this yarn. And it's kind of like um, if you've ever used Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool, it's very similar to that. Um, you got kind of have the color changing barber pole effect. Um, and you can, I think, order from them online if you want to check them out. Um, they're a really nice, small, really small business. Um, but yeah, so I, I knit this and these are both super wash yarns um, and at a, kind of a looser gauge. So it's, it gets really hot where I live in Maryland. It gets really humid and hot. So I don't always love to go outside in wool in the summer, but in kind of the spring, which it is right now, <laughs> um, it's really nice to have something that's, you know, it's still knit. You can still wear your knitting and, and, and have that as a part of your wardrobe, um, which I know as knitters we all love. Uh, but it's not too hot, you know, it's kind of, um, wool is, um, wool is moisture wicking, wool is kind of temperature controlling in a way, you know, it keeps us really warm, but it also kind of, um, kind of controls the temperature of our body. So it doesn't feel overwhelmingly hot to wear this, um, unless it's really humid outside, which sometimes it is here. So, um, yeah, again, I would definitely recommend, um, knitting some some summery tops, especially at a looser gauge with the lighter yarn. And um, I actually would not shy away from using a woolier yarn, maybe not like wool and spun necessarily, cause that can feel a little bit, um, to me it just kind of feels like winter. <laughs> it feels like fall and winter, but um, you know, a worsted spun yarn, like jagger spun, jagger spun's a good choice because it's super light. Um, and there's a, a, a really decent amount of yardage. There's a lot of yards on a skein of jagger spun. Um, John Urban Devonia is also a nice kind of woolier but worsted spun option that's super lightweight. Um, you could go for any of our favorite Shetland yarns if you wanted to try a woolen spun, but you could also go for Jameson and Smith Heritage, which is kind of a lighter weight. Um, maybe even the Jameson and Smith lace weight, Retrosaria Mondim, um, any of those kind of lighter weight. Mm you know, go for woolly if that's your thing. Definitely try that out. But like the kind of more worsted spun, um, you know, I think that'd be a really good option. Um, or you could use like a lioness, blacker lioness, which has linen in it, which is a really nice option for summer. Or a cotton blend, you know, use your favorite yarn. I'm just like, those are some great options that you can get at the woolly thistle. Um, so it's speaking of Retrosaria, um, I'm gonna segue into my, the vanilla sweater that I'm knitting right now, which is knit out of Retrosaria, and this is the one that's attached, sorry. Um, Retrosaria Pig Hall. So I always ask my friends who, who see this, I say, what do you think that is? And we, we come up with a whole story behind this little half mermaid, half goat, sheep. Yeah, I think it's a horned sheep. Love that, that's fun. Sheep can be mermaids too, why not? There's probably a cool history behind this that is not on the label, but um, if anyone knows, I would love to hear it. Um, so Peggle Hall, I'm gonna read you some stuff from the back, uh, is a breed specific yarn composed of Serra de Estrella and Portuguese Merino wool. It is entirely sourced and manufactured in Portugal. It will bloom and soften considerably after being washed. And that is something that you definitely will wanna keep in mind the first time you touch this yarn, cause it's quite woolly. We recommend washing and blocking your swatch to determine gauge. It's not super washed, by the way, but you probably knew that because 
um, we are as a tribe generally at the woolly thistle. We like superwash yarns, but lots of stuff is non-superwash. It's, it's woolly. This is a woolly wool. Um, and you can tell, you, if you've used woolly wools before and you've blocked them, um, it really, you can, you can tell like when you touch a yarn, oh, that's going to block, like that's going to bloom quite a lot after I block it. Um, this has, this is a 50 gram ball and it has 220 meters in it. So that's pretty generous yardage. Um, you know, that's, that's like into the 240, 250 yards. So if you get two, you know, that's, that's close to 500 yards of yarn. That's, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of yardage. So this is color zero two and it's, it's, if you look closely, it's kind of like pink heathered with yellow up close, but it definitely appears orange. And here's mine. Um, so there's needles in it. It's not even close to done. <laughs> oh, and the needles are going to make that clacky sound. So I'm just going to pull this mess. I, I knit my sleeves magic loop style. Although I'm really interested in trying the Chiao Gu um, short tips fur sleeves that Maggie and Kareem were talking about on the last episode. So as you can see, I've done the body and a split hem, although um, I'm gonna talk about, about, the, about the mistakes I made <laughs> um, in a bit. But so um, I would say the first thing I'm gonna say about this is don't be afraid to try knitting the vanilla sweater in other yarns than Rama because it's a really fun way to kind of explore the ways that other woolier wools will behave you know, at this gauge and, um, and, you know, it's a nice way to kind of knit a sweater that, you know, cause everybody loves a vanilla sweater and it fits great. It's a nice wardrobe piece. And again, I want one in every color. Like I'm just going to keep knitting these because, you know, cut it up, the, you know, make a steak and cut it, do, do your thing, make it yours, obviously, um, modify it to the, you know, how you want to wear your sweaters, but, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna keep making these until I have one in every single color. Um, <laughs> I don't, you know, I like to to keep some time in between when I'm making them so that I don't just like only knit vanilla sweaters, but sometimes I just get this like urge and I'm like, I gotta make a vanilla sweater. So um, I would, yeah, I would urge you to play with different types of woolly yarns. Go for a worsted spun, see how that behaves. You know, try Devonia or, um, you know, um, what did I say earlier, Jagger spun. <laughs> Uh, see how, you know, and again, using a lighter weight yarn, you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to adjust that gauge. Maybe, um, you might have to go up a needle size if it's lighter. It might be a little looser than you were expecting, um, but then you block it. Maybe it's not so, the gauge doesn't seem so loose. So I've made these in, um, in JNS two ply. Love my one in JNS two ply jumper weight. That's my, it's so light. It's so airy but it's still kind of like really nice in the summer if you're like a little chilly at night like if you live in new england um but you can try i've knit one in tuka wool um and i love that too you could try garthen or sock that's a beautiful woolly yarn you could try daughter of a shepherd marie wallen uh bichet bouche and if you want like a little softer you could try the cashmere bichet bouche uh, maybe like if you want a slightly less woolly one you could try uh, mondim from retrosaria but or Vovo, I think, from Retrozaria is also kind of a sport fingering weight. Try that one. But yeah, there's just so many options and so many beautiful woolly wools. And Rama it has a huge color palette, but other yarns have different types of color palettes that have different types of heathering and different types of color mixing. And I just think it's really fun to, um, to see how other yarns behave when you try to get the same effect from a sweater, like knit the same pattern and and um, and see see the differences. It really teaches you a lot about different wools and their properties. If again, like if you're keeping one thing constant, so I always keep the vanilla sweater pattern constant. Um, you, you can really see how things change because you're keeping the pattern the same and the gauge the same. And you're saying, okay, how does this look in this yarn? How does it look in this yarn? And you know, figure out what's the difference between the two yarns. It really teaches you a lot. So um, again, check your gauge, wash and block your swatch. Um, and think about if you're gonna use a different yarn, be thinking about um, yardage, because if you're using a yarn that's 
thinner than the Rauma, which is almost kind of like a sport weight, you might not need as much yardage, but you might really want to be playing with that yarn first, doing gauge swatches, washing your gauge swatches. So make sure that you have enough yarn, maybe an extra skein from what you think you might need. Because if you have some leftover, add it to the leftovers pile. Add it to your, add it to your, um, your partial skeins, your mini skein collection. Um, and yeah, it's good to have extra. That's one thing, especially if you're using a, a new yarn, a new gauge. Make modifications if you want. Obviously, like I said, cut it up the middle. I have made a lot of vanilla raglans and I haven't checked too often. Um, think like, you know, when I make them other than like how many I cast on and like separate for each section. So I know I have to check the numbers for that. And then I always have to check the numbers for like when I'm gonna split for the sleeves. Like how many do I need on the sleeve and how many on the body? Other than that, I just kind of go. And um, you may have to rip back if you do that like I did because I just kind of picked up the neckline and didn't think a whole lot about the numbers. And I didn't pick up all the stitches along here, which were the cast on edges of the crew neck or the, excuse me, the um, increase edges of the crew neck rather than the cast on edge and then the, the spot in the middle where you cast on a bunch. Um, and I didn't pick up enough and the neckline was too tight, so I had to rip it out. I also didn't try this on and I thought that'll be long enough and I have knitting barber cords and I didn't use them which was lazy because knitting barber cords are super easy and if you don't have one the knitting barber like the they're they're cords that you attach to the tip of your needle and then you just kind of slide the stitches onto it and it's like instead of using waste yarn or another needle and another cord it's so fast it's like great be patient, be gentle if you're using a woolly plied yarn because they can sometimes just catch on the um, on the lip where the um, the needle meets the um, edge of the knitting barber cord. But um, so be gentle, be careful. But that works really well. So I'm now I'm gonna have to rip out this hem. I did a split hem. Um, I haven't decided if I if I want to keep the split hem or if I want to do a a hem without um, like just in the round. Um, yeah, but it's not long enough, so I'm going to have to rip that out too. But I said, do the sleeves first. Those are a little more work generally. <laughs> so it's nice to have those done and then just have a little, a little thing to do at the end. Um, knitting the sleeves first before you finish the body can also be useful if you think you might run out of yarn because this is a top down sweater. If you knit the sleeves to the length you want, um, and then you can just keep going and make the body as long as you have yarn for. That's something that's kind of a tip um, if you, again, if you're a little wary of running out of yarn. So yeah, try things, but don't be afraid to rip them out if they don't work out. Um, I haven't tried sneaking one yet, but if you want to learn how to do that, you should start with the victory cardigan um, because that has a lot of great sneaking tutorials and you're using a thicker yarn, so it's not going to um, you know, it'll, it'll end up pretty fast. And, um, and once you kind of get the hang of steaking, you'll just start adding steaks to everything, which is great. Um, but yeah, if you're not using a super woolly yarn, make sure you learn how to prepare a steak though. That's very important. Um, whether that's crocheting, machine stitching up the steak, um, to secure the steak, or I like to needle felt steaks if the yarn is woolly. Um, although, you know, now that I've kind of done a lot of steaks, I usually don't secure them at all anymore. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, try stuff. Don't be afraid to frog it. Um, I mean, it's sad if you have to frog the whole sweater, but just, you know, take out a neckline, make it the way you want. Definitely think about whether or not you're going to wear that piece and you're going to love it. And if you're not going to love it and wear it, how can you change it in order to love it? Because it's your piece, it's your knitting, it's what you're going to wear. So, um, yeah, think about your own your your own style whether or not it kind of fits make it the way you want it and don't be afraid to knit it two or three times if that's the case um yeah i think that's all i have for you today so i hope that uh i hope you keep knitting and um yeah try out some summer stuff what do you like to knit in the summer i knit a lot of socks in the summer i do because it's small you can carry it everywhere it's not heavy on your lap so i'm looking forward to a summer full of socks um, but yeah Thanks everyone. See you next time.
thank you emma it's always such a pleasure to have you here on the podcast and thank you for your enthusiasm for the vanilla sweater it's definitely contagious and of course we have lots and lots of vanilla sweater kits in stock so if yeah. you're feeling like you want a vanilla sweater which is good knitting for just it's, it's such a good sweater it's just it's very wearable all of that we do have kits so um those are in the shop maggie what do you have here I have a new cowl um, by a designer and friend of the shop, Mary O'Shea. Yep. This is her Indigo Shadows cowl. She recently released it and she sent it to us so we could share it with you all. How amazing is she this? She knit this using Jagger Spun. Gorgeous. Um, it's made its rounds in the shop. Everybody kind of yes. squishing and it's squishable um, and it. smooth. She used indigo and smoke. Lovely. For this one. But you could use um, But you can use any two colors, and I did grab a couple because why wouldn't you? Or you um, could even, because it's in segments, yeah. you could do different combinations. Yeah, I think that there's there's no limit. But yeah. I think, too, it just looks like a fun knit. Yes, and I like that it's very high-low contrast so that it's mm -hmm. very, um, yeah, yeah, beautiful knitting. She she sent this to us so we could show you. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Gorgeous. Lovely. And I think, too, like, worn wrapped wrap double. Yep. Just like that. Oh, it's nice. It's got a nice drapey feel to it, so it's not mm -hmm. too big. Oh, it's lovely. It's lovely. It's very nice. <laughs> Even yeah. in this heat. So, so I, you know, you can really, the Jagger Spun it comes in a wide array the of The heathers colors. that the we heathers, have. Yes. yes. So you're good to um, go with that. Yeah. This is very, very nice. And it uses up pretty much two skeins. Yeah, so, perfect. So it's a good stash fantastic. buster if you have that already. Where can they get the pattern? The pattern is available on Ravelry. Okay. And um, it's Telly Mungin is her Ravelry handle. Go um, link to it. Yep, it's Indigo Shadows. Very nice. Thank you. That's yeah. a lovely design using some yes. lovely Jagger Spun. This just came in. And it is live in the shop today. Today is its launch day. Mm. And it's Traditions revis Revisited modern estonian knits by alex bird um, who's been who i've seen she does these beautiful organic i and, like the inside cover yeah really pretty. yeah alex bird she's she's been around doing her thing for quite a while she's a designer and she makes these beautiful project bags um, it's just a nice classic yeah got little twisting on the arms and uh yarns in here any that are familiar um, to the us? blue one there was yarnadelic from John Arben. Yep. Um, and this book focuses on. Oh, look at I that. Know, those are nice. Up higher. Bone. There we go. <laughs> look at that all over color work. So, this is Estonian traditional uh, yeah. motifs and designs. Yep. And Lovely. I like that one. I think that's the one on the cover. Yeah. Really and this is published by Lina. Mm hmm. Do we still have, oh, I like that. I like mm -hmm. the waist, the the design going around the waist. Yeah. And sort of letting the yoke be uh, calm up yeah. near your face, which is nice. And I like, you'll see it has like the lap, the braid in there. I guess Estonian, not Latvian. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, yeah. So that is in stock now. Uh, we have been offering it on pre-order. So those will be out to you very shortly. Yep. Uh, just launched today. There's socks in there. Yeah, it's, you know, it's Lina. It's a beautiful book. It is. Beautiful photography. Nice hard cover. Yes. And we've been selling these little books like hotcakes, uh, Feral Nurse, uh, the story of a woman who went to Feral as the nurse there. She was the only medical provider on the island in the 1960s. So I keep thinking about Call the Midwife. Here's a picture of her. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, if you go to the website, you'll see a picture of her holding the book um in current day and it's literally her adventures uh being on the island of Farrell, where maybe the population might have been around 60 it doesn't say but it's about 60 ish now i doubt it was that much more and i love this uh book cover you can see Farrell right here there's sheep sheep rock so and there's the sea because you are in the middle of the sea with nobody else around so a good read and we are also pairing this with a couple of kits yeah I've that you can the, opt for oh I've good the pattern cards for them so you can either get it with the feral cap yep it's always very popular and um turvel's tory and this i haven't seen this so this just came in this yeah. is an excellent pairing of uh feral and this is from jameson and smith 
yeah yep so um yes you can get the book and the pattern and these are lovely printed patterns so that's good uh we've had the feral kept kit here for a long time it's a very good seller so why not put it with the book that's what we thought yeah mm -hmm. great and also so this was printed by shetland wool adventure journal and also now on pre-order yes is shetland wool adventure journal four I know. And when, that, when does I that come out? that releases like end of July. So yeah, so we got a little bit we got of a, a little wait. bit of a wait, but, but we it, have we also have volumes one, two, and three in right now, mm -hmm. which doesn't often happen. So if you know you are going to want number four and you want to fill in any of the past ones, so you have a nice complete collection. Yeah, and it is a beautiful collection of really good stuff. Or you want to get all four, whatever. Um, yeah. now's the time. I would it does say. look really good. Mm hmm. Yes. Maggie, do we have anything else that we want to show today? That is it. Well, then. That was a lot. That was a lot. And we still have to go visit um, Rachel over in Fair Isle, who mm -hmm. is in the midst of lambing. And it's very windy on Fair Isle during this recording, you will see. And, um, yeah, we're just hoping that all goes well for Rachel and, yeah. uh, and her lambing. And let's jump in. Cool. We'll let her take us out. So we'll say goodbye for now. And yeah. we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks very much for watching, and if you go out, take your knitting. Bye! Well, Patchwork, my Suffolk Yow, was the first of my, uh, my yows this year to lamb. And here she is in the garden. You can see she's sort of she's picked her spot, um, and she's giving it a good sniff. So um, this is usually the, the precursor to her her lying down and and starting to actually go into lambing. Um, so I knew I didn't have much time, and literally not even five minutes later, I'd rushed inside to wash my hands, grab a towel, grab some iodine, and uh, came out to uh, to find she'd had the first of her her twins. So that was the, the little girl, so I, I moved them both inside to a stall. So although she has a big udder, it's really important to check that um, the milk is actually flowing freely and she's not got anything like mastitis that's going to stop the lamb drinking. Um, so luckily she has a, a good supply and I do the same on the, the other side as well just to check. So here you can see the, um, the the water bag coming out just ahead of the, the second lamb and there's its little front legs poking out. Well, a few hours later that day, Patience had her twins, another boy and a girl. There go. She was a little bit more interested in her food than her, her lamb.
jumping. There we are. Right, you're going to stay in here for a bit. And a couple of days later, Flopsy had her lamb. This was uh, just after 3.30 in the morning and uh, I'd been up with her for a, a few hours and um, Flopsy was a first time mum and he was quite a big lamb so uh, it took a bit of uh, work getting him out. So this was me finally going to bed at 4.30 that morning and then getting back up at 6 o'clock to do the checks. Flopsy. Who is this giant? Is that your baby? Your baby?
So now we're just waiting on Blossom to lamb. Because she had such weak legs as a lamb herself, the, the weight of carrying either a lamb or lambs, plural, is really taking its toll on her and she's struggling to, to walk on her front legs now, bless her. Um, but she's got a huge udder, so hopefully any day soon.